Let's get more now on that news that broke in the last few moments. Patrick O'Flynn is stepping down as UKIP's economic spokesman. Our assistant political editor, Norman Smith, is in Westminster for us as always. Norman, what do, you, what do we should take from this? Well, we do now have this uh, statement from Patrick Flynn saying that he is standing down to apologise for, you remember that article he wrote in the Times the back end of last week accusing Mr Farage of, in the election, becoming snarling, aggressive, thin-lipped. Apparently he now believes those remarks were inappropriate, although he says he thinks they were misinterpreted, they were more meant to uh, criticise the way Mr Farage had been presented during the election campaign. Nevertheless, he has stood down. What I think it means is that UKIP's travails and turmoil continue because we've had uh, Mr. Farage's chief of staff has stood down, one of his uh, press people has stood down, now his economic spokesman uh, has stood down, and you sense the uneasiness in UKIP ranks is far from over despite the concerted effort over the last few days to paper things over and for everyone to be lovey-dovey. We had uh, Douglas Carswell uh, and Mr. Farage uh, together outside Westminster trying to put on a show of being uh, best pals. We had Suzanne Evans on the Andrew Marsha at the weekend saying it was all done and dusted and it was behind them. My sense is this rather suggests it is not behind them. And I think the reason it's not behind them is because there is a genuine debate within UKIP about their role in the forthcoming EU referendum campaign and whether Nigel Farage is the right figure to be, if not the forefront of the campaign, certainly one of the leading figures, because the argument is, <coughs> excuse me, he is a man who, while he energizes his own supporters, repels many others. And there is a view among some UKIP supporters that on this critical issue for them of getting out of Europe, Nigel Farage is not the man to be at their head. So my sense is this will just fuel the question marks within UKIP, albeit that Mr. O'Flynn is saying he's resigning to apologize. In other words, he's sort of falling on his sword. My sense is it will just simply... Uh, refuel all the question marks that we've seen over the past few days about Mr. Farage's leadership. Yeah, and just briefly, Norman, he said that, uh, as you say, he, he wrote this article at the back end of last week. He's taken quite a few days to come to this conclusion that it is now right for him to do this and apologise. Nigel Farage, we've heard constantly, he says he couldn't have more support from within the party. How much pressure do you think Patrick O'Flynn was under to do this? The short answer is I don't know. Um, I would have thought Mr Farage might have been reluctant to see him go because it just throws UKIP back into the headlines and his leadership back into the headlines again. Listening to what uh, Suzanne Evans was saying on Sunday, I very much got the sense that they just wanted to calm things down now, put it behind them. OK, Mr Farage may take two weeks off, but there was no question of him standing down. What sort of message does this send out? Well, it sends out a message that maybe uh, Mr. O'Flynn was pushed, as you suggest, or maybe he still has some doubts about Mr. Farage. I would have thought the natural thing would be just to carry on with business as usual. This suggests to me that it is not business as usual in UK. Okay. Norman, for the moment, thanks very much.